Old world, new world. Why, hello there. I'm Wine Dine Caroline, and you're watching Learn Wine with Caroline. If you love my real wine talk, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends. Today, we are going to talk about old world versus new world wines. Ugh. Ugh, what is that? Oh yeah, it's the taste of colonialism. Old world, new world, that's very clearly colonial language. It's not even trying to be anything else. So while we're marching in the streets and toppling statues of slavers, it's about time the wine world owned up to its own colonial history and the industry's racism today. Wine is a colonial product. Vineyards were installed outside of Europe on stolen land by invading colonists. Think for a minute about the major non-European wine countries, the USA, Chile, Argentina, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. Each of these modern countries is the result of the brutal murder and subjugation of native people, the erasure of cultures, and in most cases, the work of slaves. This is not even to mention the destabilizing effect that strong alcohol had and still has on native communities. It's been widely acknowledged that liquor played a big role in the weakening and conquering of indigenous groups around the world by white people. The wine trade is still fully dominated by white people. It's all about generational wealth and land ownership, things that we white people have always denied people of color. A couple weeks after the murder of George Floyd by American police, Wine Enthusiast magazine published a list of black-owned wineries around the world. The best wine market research there is could come up with 98 wineries at the time. The list has grown to 105 as of today, June 31st. Some estimates say that there are 2 million wine brands in the world, which would mean that 0.00005% of them are owned by black people. Black and brown people have always been working these vineyards often for incredibly low wages or for alcohol itself. They work in restaurants, distribution, they touch all corners of the wine world, yet they still rarely hold top positions and rarely are their names seen on wine labels. Wine marketers and brands routinely ignore black consumers who love wine and want to be marketed to. The fact is, wine is racist as fuck. So what can we do about it? Firstly, check the links in the description of this video. You'll find that wine enthusiast list of black owned wineries to support some articles to read, as well as a number of nonprofits where you can donate to support people of color in the wine industry. Put your money where your glass is. Secondly, talk about racism in wine and wine's colonial past. Think about these issues, learn about them. As black communities have been trying to tell us for generations, racism pervades everything, even your wine. And finally, let's stop saying old world and new world. It's colonialist language that's outdated and irrelevant. Words matter, and this is a pretty easy but powerful thing to do. I swapped out Old World and New World for European and non-European last year, and guess what? It was not a difficult change to make. Thanks for listening to this. I know it wasn't what you were expecting. Make sure to check the links in the description to further educate yourself about racism and wine. Cheers.